Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and thanks for watching. Well, the governor has completed his health care tour. Joining me to analyze it is Carolyn Scanlon, the president of the Hospital and Health System Association. And then stay with us for our exclusive interview with Dick Willie, the outgoing head of the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency. All of that after these words. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, joining me as often is the case is Carolyn Scanlon, the president and CEO of, of the Hospital and Health System Association. Finally, after a couple years, I got that right. Remember, we'd always have a little, would. little fun with the name. All right, Carolyn, uh, on to the serious business, and I don't think there's anything more serious now than health care. Man, it's, it's emerged as the number one domestic issue in the country. We've got this ambitious program by the governor. He's out a couple of weeks ago going around the state selling the prescription for Pennsylvania. Uh, first of all, what is it that you think is important about what the governor is trying to do here? Governor is trying to do three broad things in his prescription for Pennsylvania. The first, which I think is the core and the most right. important, is to ensure every Pennsylvanian. Make sure that every citizen of this Commonwealth has some form of insurance or payment for the care that they receive. That is, I think, the number one item in his prescription right. for Pennsylvania. Secondly, he wants to make sure that the way we deliver care to anyone with or without insurance today is done with quality and safety. Right. And then third, that the care um, is as uh, clinically uh, up-to-date um, and as uh, all of the expertise uh, can yeah. be brought to bear on that care. Yeah. Well, it's hard. I mean, we, we've had lots of debates on the program about it because this is a huge issue. It's, it's, you know, along with energy, you know, maybe the two most important issues the legislature is dealing with this fall. And, and I don't think anyone kind of says, okay, we don't want to cover the 800, 900,000 and something. We don't have to get into how many. But what, what do you think about the approach? I mean, this is, I know, something that you've thought about a good bit. Is, is the governor's, does the governor's approach make sense as to how he wants to do it? Well, one of the things that we're all trying to understand is sort of the financial underpinning of yeah. what he wants to do. What kind of services um, would be provided right. through a Cover All Pennsylvanians plan, which is what the, the governor has called it. You know, when you and I buy health insurance or we get it through our employer, right. there are certain services that are covered. We have co-payments for yep. care, whole yep. series of things. We're trying to understand what the Cover All Pennsylvanians does, right. how much it would cost in a premium, right and then how to pay for that, That's right. and the paying for that yeah. so that it has financial sustainability is the probably one of the most yeah. important and most difficult to get your arms around. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, I mean as a goal, I, I, I don't think almost the, the polls that I've seen you know, on this subject are pretty clear. I think we're heading to some kind of national health care. I mean, the presidential election next year will, I think, really invigorate and in, in, invigorate that debate. Let's talk a little bit about something that obviously you're directly involved with. You represent the hospitals. That last summer, there, you know, the, there was legislation passed to deal with in, infections, not just in hospitals, but in other, you know, institutions that see patients. Uh, how, how, give us an update on where that is. Well, the, the bill that passed um, will be fully implemented by February of 2008. And it takes what hospitals and state government has already been doing right. about tracking and understanding infections and brings us um, in, into a data collection and national network that allows us to use uniform definitions, allows us to have sort of real-time information, mm -hmm. will allow us to compare ourselves to other states, other hospitals. Right. Uh, puts a rigor to the kind of plans that hospitals, nursing homes, and ambulatory surgery facilities have to put in place. Um, it is what hospitals want to do, um, and we want to be able to demonstrate to the public what we're doing yeah. and how we are uh, eliminating infections in hospitals. This is a growing problem, though, both inside a hospital and a nursing home and in a community. Right. And the kinds of infections that we see in the hospitals, we're also seeing that community-based. And we've talked about, and they all have 
initials and acronyms, yeah, but not, we've we, talked about all of these. We have too, and I can't, you know, so it, I understand they're complicated, so, but... We've talked about all of these, but yeah. what we're seeing now um, yeah. is the, um, the, the numbers exploding in the community, and that's a wow. very big concern. So what we learn within the institution, we're hopeful, can also be used in communities, and that we can all be working on this. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about what you think the role of the consumer is. There's a lot more interest in sort of consumers managing their health care and where all that goes. Uh, we'll be back after these words with Carolyn Scanlon. Uh, see you back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Pennsylvania Medical Society, Doctors and Patients, Preserve the Relationship, and by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association, Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program with uh, Carolyn Scanlon. We're talking about uh, the governor's prescription for Pennsylvania. He's been out uh, campaigning for it as is his want. No one quite campaigns like Governor Rendell on anything. He, he can goes everywhere. He's uh, here, there, and everywhere, as they say. Carolyn, let's talk a little bit about the consumer-directed uh, health care. I mean, it seems to be the wave of the future. Let consumers have more involvement in, in decision-making. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Well, I, I think it's totally appropriate. You know, as we, um, as clinicians, uh, have learned more about health care and how to deliver care, you get more choices and more decisions about what you want in your care, um, and consumers should be involved in that. Right. As a parent, I want to be involved in my sure. child's care. Um, as a child, I want to be involved in my parents' care uh, as they go through the aging right. process. Uh, and so I think in large part, uh, the more data we have, the more information we have, the more clinical choices we have, the more the, the consumer or the patient needs to be involved. Um, the governor, in, as part of his plan, um, is proposing how um, the state can help with managing of chronic care, right. things like asthma or diabetes. There are lots of choices you can make as a consumer or as a patient mm -hmm. if you are in or have a chronic disease, um, and I think those are totally yeah. appropriate. Before, before you go, I want to talk a little bit about the, the Clean Indoor uh, Act, which is, in a sense is a ban on smoking in public facilities. Uh, it, it's, it's a pretty big issue, and I think, you know, there are two different sort of points of view on the legislature, in, in the legislature, at least at least two, about how much uh, exemption should be in the, in the Clean Air Act if, if one is passed by the legislature. Uh, what, what's your sense about uh, what you think ought to be in that bill, first of all? Well, first of all, I think we just need a bill. I mean, I think we just need to start the process right. of not uh, of having certain places where smoking is just prohibited. Um, the, the kind of secondhand smoke, the kind of problems that smoking um, exacerbates, we now know yeah. it causes it's lung cancer. It's a serious health problem. It's, it's irrefutable. Yep. And for those that have chronic disease like yeah. asthma, yeah. it's not helpful. Yeah. And the employees um, of people who work in establishments, that's an issue. It's a very important issue. So th the more you exclude from a ban, the more you have yeah. individuals who are exposed yeah. to the smoke. I don't pretend to know exactly where those exclusions yeah. should be. I think they should just figure it out, yeah. but agree, the other, but you and make move a, it. But you make a great point that I don't think, uh, uh, and we've done a bunch of shows on this, no one's made this before, and it is get a bill, you can always amend it. We can see, they can see how it works, and, you know, they talk about casinos, they talk about you know, in hotels, some rooms, mm -hmm. you know, where they'll be reserved for smoking. They talk about these things called cigar bars. I don't smoke, but I know they, I, I couldn't go into them. I couldn't see to the other side of the room when I go in. But, it, it, but, but that's a point that has not been made before. Let's just do it. You know, most of us, um, when we are eating or when we're in hotels, yeah. we'd like it to be smoke-free. Yeah. Hospitals are moving to smoke-free campuses. My organization, as of November 1st, will have a smoke-free campus. We're already right. a smoke-free building. Right. Smoke-free campus means we won't have people smoking at our front or back doors or in our parking lots. It's just the most appropriate thing to yeah. do for the citizens' public health. And we just need to get on with it and yep. do it. That's a great point. As always, uh, thanks for coming in. 
All right, when we come back, we have Dick Willey, the outgoing head of the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency. Stay with us for this important interview. See you in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program for our exclusive interview with the outgoing head of the Pennsylvania Higher Education Association, Dick Willie. Dick, welcome to the program. Thank you, Terry. Well, look, before we get to the topics that I think a lot of our viewers will be interested in, you know, the, some of the trips and the bonuses and things I want to give you a chance to, uh, to discuss, let's talk a little bit about the, the growth of FIA during your tenure. I mean, I, I, I want to give you an opportunity on the record, you know, to talk about what you think FIA accomplished while you were its head. Well, I'm, I'm glad uh, to be able to do that, Terry, because... Uh, it has been an outstanding record. Um, the growth of the organization uh, has gone, we have four lines of business, has gone from $20 billion in our servicing to $50 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, our guarantee, which is another line of business, has gone from uh, about $20 billion to almost $50. Um, uh, the ownership of loans is another uh, right. area where we make money. Um, when I came in, we had about four and a half billion dollars worth of loans that we owned. We now have over twelve billion. I mean, so, it's a big. So your point is, you've been expanding the loans that you've given to students in this state, and you also do and this. In, I was going to say in in yeah. in many other places, and the grants that you, I guess, uh, implement under uh, state legislation. Has, have grown as well? Well, uh, they've grown because we've put our money into them as a result of the tremendous growth of the organization. Uh, they've essentially um, almost flatlined, yeah. you know, for coming from the governor and the General Assembly. Uh, but over the last uh, three years, uh, we've put um, about pretty close to $175 million of our own money into that state grant now, program. Now, this would be grants for students who are you know, academically eligible, but who may not come from family who come right. from families with incomes that are yeah. It's, they, all, it's all financial need based. Okay. And we've created some other programs. We've created the Armed Forces Loan Forgiveness Program. Right. We've created a, a program that I'm very proud of, the Academic Excellence Scholarship Program, right. which marries merit and need. Quite right. frankly, uh, we've created the Quality Early Childhood. Uh, education uh, program, mm -hmm. we're, you know, continuing your education as possible programs to encourage folks to right. go to school. We've done a tremendous amount right. of things. And, and the net result of the last five years when I became the CEO, uh, all of our public service uh, programs were at about a hundred million dollars or thereabouts. We're mm -hmm. at pretty close to two hundred mm -hmm. million dollars a year now. Okay, let, let's uh, t turn to kind of a mechanical thing. I mean, FIA is governed by a board that directs what you do. I think there are 20 people, and 16 right. of them are legislators. Do you think there's a fundamental problem with having legislators on the board? I mean, in retrospect, what, what, do, you, what do you think? I mean, that's been debated, and there's some people who like it and some people who don't. What's, what's your thought about that? Well, Terry, you know, as I'm leaving, it's, you know, I think reflectively, and I've discussed this with my predecessor, it's the strength and weakness, yeah. you know, of our organization. Strength-wise, when we had the Sally May thing come at us. Right, when they were trying, <coughs> Sally May was trying to buy, you yeah, know, they were take the hostile takeover attempt. Right. Uh, they're solidly there. And right. whenever we need support from the General Assembly, they're typically solidly right. there. Uh, so there are connection with uh, the body that created us, essentially. Uh, on the other side, however, when you run into situations where, you know, we're running a business, mm -hmm. fundamentally, and you have to make all kinds of business decisions. Now, pom-poms at Penn State, 
Uh, you know, our <laughs> board's getting beat up for pom-poms at Penn State. But the fact of the matter is, uh, our organization's getting tens of millions of dollars in revenues from the students mm -hmm. at Penn State. And so any businessman's going to say, I want those students to remember who, you know, I who we it. are. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, it's things like uh, the Hershey Park event that was recently, uh, you know, uh, come right, on. Right, that was, a hun <clears throat> it's for our audience, that was $108,000, and then some employees paid back some of the money that you expended, right? Well, yeah. To, I take, mean, to go on a, take, it was a employee recognition day at Hershey Park. Go right, ahead. That, every, that every company does. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we were there at our booth alongside other companies that were doing the same thing. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is the, 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 the dollars that were reported were not right. It was uh, yeah. about half of what was reported because th some of the employees bought extra tickets for other people and their families. So, but your point reported. would be that you're running a business and this is, I mean, you think that's the problem that you kind yeah. of, you're, you're in these two worlds. Yes. You're in the private world and where no one would make a claim if some private corporation went somewhere and did an employee recognition, but if you do it because you're quasi, whatever you are, either quasi public or quasi private, right. that that creates a, a perception I problem? I think that's, a, that's the fundamental problem. It's a difficult message to get, to get across for folks, that yeah. we are in the public sector, right? but we are a business that has to compete for every right. dollar that we make. We aren't the Department of Transportation right. or the Department of State. You don't have to come to us if you want. You can go somewhere. You can go somewhere. All right, else. we're talking with Dick Willie. We'll return with this discussion uh, after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association the future of long-term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Penn Future, where we believe that every environmental victory grows the economy. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to Pennsylvania Newsmakers for our interview with Dick Willie, the former CEO of the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency. Dick, again, thanks for coming on. I know this is not an easy time. I mean, you've left this position that you held for five years. But as you said, uh, you made a five-year commitment. You kept that commitment. Let's go to a couple of the, you know, the controversial subjects I want to give you a chance to respond to. One we talked about before is the, the sort of trips that the board took, one to Nimicolin that I think that's a... Uh, Exclusive resort in Western PA that drew a lot of the ire. ire. You, 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 you personally, you were attached. I mean, the decision to go there was attached to you. But who made that decision? Well, yeah, you know, I inherited those things. Uh, it, it, you know, it was a decision that the board made to do. It was a decision that the previous uh, CEO had made. When I came in, I actually cut down on the number right. of trips that were made. But you know, Tara, again, you know, we're a business. Uh, and, and I have to say, on those particular trips, while some people might think it was outrageous, uh, less than a million dollars was spent on those trips, but the, but the customers who came to those business conferences right. brought us, over that period of time, the specific customers brought us $100 million mm -hmm. in revenue. So your point would be, what business wouldn't invest a million to make a hundred million? And, right. In fact, yeah. I've had many conversations with folks in, in, in the business world who say, you know, what's the problem yeah. here? Well, what I else? know the problem is you're back to this problem of you're being a public entity at the same right. time you're dealing in this private world. Yeah, well, the, people t keep trying to make this, uh, this connection between how much we spend and how much we could have spent on state grants. Well, right. the fact of the matter is, if you're going to microanalyze every business decision that, that folks at FIA have to make, right. now and into the future, you're going to do it a lot of harm right. uh, because they're, they're going to be not entre entrepreneurial and take you know, risks that all businesses have to take. Right. They're going to be covering their you-know-what. Covering their butts, you can uh, say. And, and, and the net result is um, decisions about the future 
decisions yeah. to make money aren't going to get made. Yeah. Uh, and I'm very concerned about the future of the organization if that happens. Yeah. Well, me, okay, and then the other issue that's been big is the is the size of the bonuses, which was I think heavily criticized in the press. I think there were a number of editorials around the state. They're not all of them. I mean, on the pension and the bonuses, some at least there was a editorial I saw in the Reading Eagle uh, the other week. But the bigger point is the bonuses. Do you think they were appropriate, excessive? Uh, what's I don't know. You tell me. I mean, the, you know, the fact of the matter is, number one, I didn't, you know, I had no part in creating them. Yeah. You know, it was, again, I inherited the existing compensation system. The one thing that I did do was, was help to facilitate bringing in, in uh, Mercer Human Resources, which is a worldwide mm -hmm. human resources, very respected human resources consulting firm. Uh, and they did a study and said that I'm making about 25 percent of the median right. uh, of, of, of folks who are running not-for-profit uh, financial uh, organizations like this. Remember, we're talking about an organization here, Terry, that is managing over $100 billion, all told, with the servicing, with the loans that it owns, with the remote servicing system, uh, and, and the guarantees mm -hmm. over a hundred billion dollars worth of money. Yeah. I mean, now there are all kinds of, you know, as you leave this office, as this position, some, and, and obviously you care deeply about it in the future, I think, you know, it's safe to say you did not personally want to be a lightning rod, you know, and have right. every problem of FIA kind of end up in Dick Willie's desk. Uh, what, what, what do you, what do you I mean, I mean is that, was that your primary motive at this point for saying, you know, I've done this, met my five-year commitment, it's time to, you know, take some time off? Well, it, you know, whenever we make decisions like that, yeah. you know, there are all kinds of uh, things that go into it. But, you know, one of them, for example, is my wife retired about sure. a year and a half ago. I did make a commitment uh, for five years. Yeah. All of this stuff is happening. And, you know, it was my perception. I've told uh, many of the employees it was my perception that for some reason Dick Willie is the lightning rod sure. at this point in time for the organization. Um, so, you know, if Dick Willie can remove himself, yep. you know, time to remove himself and hopefully things will settle yep. down, become a little bit more rational, then, you know, that's what a leader does, quite right. frankly. Well, thanks for coming in. I know this has not been an easy decision and uh, glad to see you're looking well and good luck. Thank you, Terry. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers and as always, you stay well.